William Landers is portfolio manager at BlackRock, and he joins us now to discuss the effect this could have on Brazilian stocks. Will's Latin America fund, by the way, is in the 95th percentile over the last year, and he maintains that Brazil is his favorite market in Latin America. He joins us now. Mr. Landers, great to have you. Thank you. First, your reaction. Were you surprised Rio won the 2016 Olympics bid? No, absolutely not. I mean, Brazil is on a roll these days. You know, last year, they were awarded the World Cup for, for soccer. Uh, the economy is doing well. President Lula has had a great presidency. Uh, and this is really the icing on the cake for his uh, eight years in office. You know, the elections are next year. Uh, Brazil, Latin America, South America never had an Olympics uh, Games before. Uh, Brazil has been doing very well. They have the infrastructure or the plans to have it in place. So I think it was, it was a well-deserved win for, for Rio. Brazilian markets, though, have come so far so fast. I mean, is there really room to continue this level of growth even with the Olympics? Absolutely. I mean, if you look at the Brazilian market today, it's trading at less than 12 times 2010 earnings. And I would argue that there's a lot of upside surprises potentially uh, for these earnings forecasts. So I think that, you know, Brazil has done a lot over the last six years to improve uh, the, the overall effectiveness of the economy, to reduce the country-specific risks. Uh, it's now an investment-grade country by all three of the major rating agencies uh, and still trading at the bottom end of the range uh, in terms of global markets. So I think that Brazil will continue in this re-rating process over the next several years. Uh, and that's why we're still very positive on the market. So your Latin America fund, ticker MALTX, is up 92.42% year-to-date, performing better, as we said, than 95% of your peers. Do you intend to make any changes to your portfolio upon hearing that Rio won the Olympics? No, we didn't make any changes, and I don't think we will anytime soon. I mean, this is seven years away. Uh, most of the infrastructure projects are going to be done by private sector, by, by privately held companies. There are some companies that will benefit from in the steel sector, uh, and but this will be gradual over the years. Uh, I think that some of the knee-jerk reactions that we saw on Friday with airlines, rental, car rental companies, and even the, the, the duty-free company that's uh, in the airports in Brazil going up 5 6% on Friday was a little bit overdone. It was kind of just, okay, these are the stocks that are the natural play, but clearly they're not going to be benefiting any time in the next couple of years in terms of their results. So everyone's talking about infrastructure, infrastructure. Our last guest, Jeffrey Dennis, said that's the way to play. Uh, what do you think? What's the best way, say, for a U.S. investor to uh, make money on the Olympic story? Well, I think it's to invest in Brazil overall. I think this is going to give a lot of confidence to the to the Brazilian people. Uh, we've already been very positive on the domestic side of the economy, given that we have record low interest rates. I mean, I was born and raised in Brazil, you know, and even in my father's lifetime, we've never seen interest rates as low as we have today. But we're still talking about 8.75 percent rates, uh, which are one of the, amongst the highest in the world. Uh, are still attracting enough uh, investors uh, for the so-called carry trade. Uh, but we think that there's enough upside in those sectors uh, that we don't have to try to come up with a theme of investing in the Olympics at this point. There will be ways to play that, but I think it's a couple of years away still. Can I get you to nail down some specific sectors? Um, I think you mentioned that some of the moves were perhaps exaggerated in TAM, the Brazilian-based airline. What about some of the steel companies? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Gerdau, CSN, Uzimina, uh, Brazil's large steel companies, they are attractive, but I think that they have some risks. And we look at Gerdau, which is the, the, the largest uh, long steel player in Brazil and the natural play for infrastructure, half of their business is in the U.S., and it's not doing as, that well, and it will take a while for that to do better. So I think we have to keep that in mind, that for the next couple of quarters, even a couple of years, there's still some, some issues to deal with uh, before they start to really get a lot of benefits from the Olympics. Uh, so that's why I would prefer to play via the banks or via some of the other companies that are benefiting from the economy today. You mentioned, and my last guest as well said, that Brazil is, um, is sound from a debt perspective, that uh, there's no risk of insolvency there. But I'm concerned, and a lot of other investors in Brazil might be wondering, there's a, a big uh, expense list piling up, right? You've got the elections in 2010. You've got the World Cup, the soccer coming up as well, ahead a couple years ahead of the Olympics, the Olympics spending in and of itself. So is Brazil good for all of these events, hosting these, these events, say, if the foreign investors don't step forward? Well, if you look at Brazil's reserves, Brazilian reserves have stayed above $200 billion throughout this whole crisis. So unlike other emerging economies, they didn't have to waste any of their reserves to try to protect their currency. Uh, if you look at Brazil today, it's actually becoming a net creditor to the IMF, saying they're going to buy $10 billion worth of bonds from the IMF in the SDR forms. This is the first time ever that Brazil is a creditor to the IMF. Uh, they have the money. Uh, a lot of this money will be invested by the private sector. There are a lot of companies looking to, to build some of these venues and then eventually okay. under concessions. So I think there, there's a lot of, there, there won't be a problem for that. Will Landers at BlackRock, many thanks for your insights. 